speak. Welcome in to the Nickel City Crew. I am your host, Rob Griffin. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nickel City Crew. This episode, along with all of our episodes, are presented by Crippen Legacy Entertainment here on Spreaker. We're so glad that you're joining us for some of your Buffalo Bills and NFL content again today. And as always, these are my Bills thoughts said out loud. All right, let's get straight to it. I um, I really appreciate uh, tonight's episode. This episode for season two, Nickel City Crew, we're back in the building. Um, I've got a guest on tonight, uh, Adam and I do, excuse me, uh, DT, we're here. And we just wanted to start the episode off on the right foot. I would be off brand if I did not start the episode off um, this way. So I want to get it out of the way, um, so to speak, but not get it out of the way in respects to being disrespectful to any of the parties involved, especially the victim. Uh, who's who I care about. Um, I'm interested in making sure that I stay on brand. Episode one, you can look me up and look up my stats, Nickel City Crew. Episode one season, uh, excuse me, episode, uh, excuse me, season one, episode five, excuse me, the good old boys club. I addressed the situation that needed to be addressed head on. I talked about it right off the bat, the good old boys club with the situation with Brian Flores. Um, I, I make sure that I take on issues when they come up to my door because of the fact that it would be me wasting my my platform if I didn't. Episode 10 last season, season one, obviously the Jefferson Avenue massacre had to address it right off the bat. There was nothing else that I could do other than address it. So I need to start the episode off in a certain way because of the fact that I have to stay on brand. The Matteriza thing, I guess I officially had my first uh, Twitter beef, I guess you quote unquote, you would call it last night regarding this Matteriza situation. And I wanted to speak about it. And Again, kind of address it and then we'll talk about it and then we'll kind of move out of the way and we'll get on to, to other things now that the Bills have taken care of the responsibilities that they needed to take care of. So joining me tonight, as always, my co-host, Nickel City Crew, my man, Adam Russell, <coughs> DT. What's good with you, man? How are you? Hey, Rob. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on. Good to have you in with us tonight, Mike. It's uh, another good week on Nickel City Crew. Appreciate it, as always, as we... Uh, you know, get to speak with uh, with our peers, with the fans, and uh, like you said, man, Bills uh, amongst some drama that's that's been pretty rare under this organization, and uh, it, it's tough to see uh, kind of from all angles. I know we'll get into it a little tonight, and um, you know, it's tough, tough as a fan to uh, to see this in your community. Yeah, well, it, it is a little bit tough to see it. Um, it's tough to see how they reacted to it, to be honest, and that's the angle I want to go with it. Joining us tonight, my special guest. From not your average podcast in the 716 over at Built in Buffalo. My man, you know him. Shot one for three. Big Mike Davis. What's good, Mike? How, how let the you heard the, crew, the name? You heard the you name. You heard the name. <laughs> I'm, I'm really good. happy, Mike, that you came. Me and Mike went to the, the Bills Panthers game. He just moved down to Charlotte, and I'm excited yes, that he's man. a part of this community down here. So I told him I'm gonna make sure that I show him the ropes down here in Charlotte. And we he got his little first baptism. Uh, downtown Man. when we went yeah we went to the games so we go get into all that and laugh about all that in a minute but to keep everything and again to keep myself on brand i wanted to make sure that i i did address something so the matter rise the situation for me and the i guess the quote-unquote twitter beef i was having last night with a few of the fans was centered around the fact that i i'm happy that the bills got themselves to the situation where they on saturday finally made the right decision and, and cut matter Riza. The problem I had with some of the Bills fans around Bills Mafia, and maybe a couple of them are were Nickel City crew members as well, was the fact that there seemed to be a lot of praising of the Buffalo Bills in getting to this decision. One of the things that I talked about in the good old boys club, and please look up that episode because I brought it up for a reason. Season one, episode five, it, it, it correlates to, to this topic. The NFL is a business, Bills Mafia. Okay. The Buffalo Bills are a entity of that business. They run the team like a business. They are looking to make money in the end. They are looking to be profitable in the end. And then the actual product on the field, obviously, they're looking to win. If they win, then obviously that brings success, which again leads you back to the bottom line. This is an entertainment business. I, I feel like I have to say that because of the fact that of, of all the different rhetoric that I was hearing on Twitter yesterday as I was quote unquote, battling with people. The Bills are a business. They are looking at their bottom line. Brandon Bean, I listen to every morsel 
every second of that press conference. It is clear to me what should be clear to the rest of Bills Mafia after hearing that press conference. The Buffalo Bills, your bu beloved Buffalo Bills, were not prepared and were not ready to fire this man until the civil suit came out. I'll say it again. Brandon Bean actually found a way through that press conference, and, and there were some keys in there, and he left little trinkets in there. And, and I, I just such great journalism by the actual uh, reporters there that were asking those questions on Saturday. Obviously, the Friday night after the uh, the Carolina Panthers game, he wasn't in the mood to really talk about anything but that situation, and I respect that. But that next Saturday, when he addressed and Brandon Bean had that press conference that night, Brandon Bean told you that the Buffalo Bills weren't necessarily ready to cut this man until this came out. Now, it's really important to look at that and to unpack it for what it is. Why would the Buffalo Bills and how possibly could they look at the allegations, which they knew about since the end of July? Let's keep everything straight. Let's keep everything 100 here at Nickel City Crew. We don't BS. I'm not going to give it to you fake. They told us that they knew at the end of July. How could you go from the end of July knowing the allegations? Brandon Bean numerous times said he knew the boulders. He called them, quote unquote, boulders of the allegations. How could you read the allegations and not fire him immediately? The reason they did not fire him immediately, Bills fans, Bills Mafia, Nickel City crew, they did not fire him immediately and didn't cut him immediately because of the fact that they were waiting. They were waiting to see the reaction. They were waiting to see how we were going to react. The media, the fans, we are the patrons. It is an entertainment business. Women were an outcry. Deservingly so. Men were in a cut. Real men were an outcry. Deservingly so. No way that this guy could be on your team. I was so happy when they obviously finally uh, announced that he wasn't going to punt that night. And me and Mike were actually in the parking lot getting ready for the game. And they announced that he wasn't going to be punting that night. So, listen, the Bills got to the actual end result that they needed to get to because of the fact that there was no way he could play for this team anymore. However, a lot of Bills mafia out there is getting things twisted and I wanted to bring you guys in on tonight and talk about it a little bit because it doesn't read any other way to me than that, Big Mike. And as our guest, I wanted to open the floor to you first. Talk to me about how you received it. Talk to me how, listen, the only problem I have, Big Mike, is that everybody is patty. And, oh, my gosh, I'm so proud to be a Bills fan. And, oh, I'm so proud. Listen, man, they were not prepared to cut this man unless it came out. If it would have stayed quiet. And the young lady would have never filed suit. I promise you, Matt Ariza, the quote-unquote cut God, would be on this team. They were ready to roll with him. They knew about this since the end of July. They knew the boulders, as I'll use my, my GM's word. So, so Mike, speak on it. I'll, I'll open the floor up to you as our guest first. What, how did you get that information? What did, how did you process it? Because I processed it in an entirely different way. And Twitter um, apparently let me know last night. <laughs> Um, you know, well, first of all, like you said, the NFL is a business. Buffalo Bills are a business. It's all about dollar. Civil suits are all about the dollar. So these things like this, they don't hit the fan until the civil suit is filed. So it's really like if you know that there are allegations out there and mm -hmm. all that, you know, it's just that allegations. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about businesses, we're talking about black and white. If I read it on a piece of paper and it's an allegation, I treat it as a business as such, as an allegation. Now, when it starts getting hot, because it did, mm -hmm. but there was no criminal, right? No criminal mm -hmm. case. So still isn't. It's being investigated. Still but it still isn't. isn't. A, but it mm -hmm. still isn't a criminal case, right? So then... Mm -hmm. When <clears throat> we got to look at the convenience of everything, right? As soon as this man get a dollar, what happened? The civil suit came out of nowhere. Okay. Because they could have did this a long time ago. It was okay. 2021, right? Mm -hmm. October. They could have mm -hmm. they, they, they did this a long time ago with anything, you know, with all the knowledge they had. They could have did a case right from there. They didn't. Mm -hmm. They waited. Civil suit, what I say before, is about money. A razor didn't have no money mm -hmm. until the they fired Mac Hack. Yeah, until they until fired, they Mac, fired Hack. Mac Hack. Mm -hmm. And when they fired Hack and he got his money, miraculously, miraculously, all this time, it all, it all pops wow, up. 
here it comes. It all pops up. But that's mm-hmm. what civil suits are. So for for everything that's going on, I mean, as, as an organization, you don't you don't like if it was a criminal case, it's he case just, he would he would have never got signed. Right. He would have never got signed, and that's a that's that's on everything. But we have seen cases like this. Um, that have came from civil suits with just money chases. Now, I'm not saying that this is it. Right. But these are how common these things pop up like that in the athletic world. Okay. Or these young men coming from college to the NFL. These are these are not common. These are not uncommon, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. for these cases to come up like this. So the organization played it as such. And I I think that that is what makes Bills fans uncomfortable, DT, to be honest. And 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 I think that that's what makes them uncomfortable in respect to the fact that they're looking in the mirror. I kept talking about the fact that we need to look into the mirror. The Bills are not unique. All 32 NFL teams would have cut their sixth round punter had he had some type of civil um, allegation yes. come up, DT. And I want you to speak to that because I think that it's the fact that we have to look in the mirror that is making Bill's Mafia uncomfortable. We didn't cut him right away. They knew at the end of July, and then the news comes out <clears> from, the, <throat> from the LA Times, DT, and then all of a sudden there's outrage, obviously, deservingly so, but the Bills, you can't forget that they already knew about it, DT. Like, speak to it. Like, am I crazy? I went through battles last night on Twitter with people that were, were making me seem like I was a bad guy, and all I was saying is stop patting them on the back they they got to the end result that they needed to get to but they they are not saints the bills are not saints they are running a business please speak on that dt and i don't need you to agree with me give me what you got they they knew and in this week of us knowing i feel like in the general public's eye like this is something the line in the you know in the in the sand i think is well crossed in a situation like this you know, guilty or innocent, right? And and you get to that, and my first thought is, even with all this, is you know, you gotta you gotta get rid of them. So if they know within the month, you know, of this happening, either they didn't know anything, which is hard to believe, as you said, the NFL is a business; it's a very powerful business with a lot of resources, and I feel like they can get into the past and and figure things out if they need to, you know. So with this, it, it's confusing because. What did they know a month ago compared to what everybody knew the other day? Mm -hmm. Uh, It it would have to be a lot different. And I'd have to agree, you know, as Mike brought up a good point. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, people out there chasing the bag, but. That I don't think that this that is the case for her. I think that the, either, I, I, you know? I believe the victim. Yeah, I believe that, the victim. It's not about that believing doesn't the victim mean, or not. It doesn't mean that the this stuff doesn't happen. Exactly. Right. And, you know, so either way you look at it, like, I think it's way over that line and i don't even know how to define that line but like just general common sense is this mm-hmm. is way over that line and even knowing the bare minimum a month ago which is hard to believe mm-hmm. like and it grew into something like this i i don't know i think they uh you know they played it out like you said and unfortunately it came out and in today's world that's just far from acceptable by any means it did and and and, and i i listened to mike Shope on on monday i was driving home from work on monday and i, I listened to him and he, he, you know, he struck such a great tone that, you know, I, I, I had to send him an email or at least a Twitter <clears> message <throat> just to let him know that I, I appreciated the fact that he struck the right tone. The bill, your bills, your beloved Buffalo Bills, Bills Mafia, they waited. OK, they waited. That's kind of what what is the joke in sports media is that bad news comes out when on Friday late. So that way they've got the whole weekend. There's not a PTI. There's not Stephen A. yelling on get up. There's not, you know what I mean, Shannon and Skip on the other Fox sport. You know, Mm -hmm. nobody is out right now on the weekend to be able to to blast on it. And they're hoping that by Monday you have cooled off and things have forgotten, have been forgotten about a little bit. Shout out to Bill's Mafia, the women of Bill's Mafia, even again, the real men of Bill's Mafia that stood up and said that this guy can't. I mean, again, like both of y'all have said it like common sense. He couldn't play on the team anymore. Like, so like what the hell are we waiting on, first of all? And the fact that he was put through that whole thing, it just kind of I don't know. It just rubbed me the wrong way with the fact that the Bills look bad on this. And I I just think that Bill's Mafia is a little bit defensive about the fact that that they look bad, that the bill, our Bills look bad. They did. Do you think the Bills look bad? A little bit for waiting, why, absolutely. But why though? Why for though? waiting? This is, yeah, this I is think they this is bad. this is scripted. You don't understand me. This is protocol. This is not 
a team looking bad. This is how shit goes. Like <laughs> for every team, this yeah. is not nothing new. Until it, until it's something, and it's, not, it's yeah, but, nothing. But I would and, argue, and that's, and that's how it is. It's a business. Alex, but Alex, go ahead, DT. Coming in like this day to day to day. I mean, this ain't this ain't your typical, you know, allegation coming in. Like there, I'm sure there's a team of you know that teams be asked to talk. They go through and investigate. And, Squash, but then there's some that you know this ain't coming through the course every day. Like this is a this is the the white whale of allegations almost. No, I I I'm with both of y'all. Like I'm not. Listen, I don't want to make this into how bad this is, is too un, bad. This is not uncommon, and I, that's I, sad. That's sad. That that's people the, that's think the point. Like, I guess that that's the point. And that's this is sad that people think this is like a unicorn. And I'm like, bro, we've seen this a million times. We've Ray seen Rice. The organizations We've seen the organizations respond like Ray, this Ray every Rice. time. And they've responded slower with criminal cases. Mm -hmm. Ray Rice. So this is Ray scripted. Hunt. This is a business. This is not mm -hmm. looking bad on the organization. They did exactly what an organization is supposed to do. If it's not criminal, you wait it out until something pops. When it pops and you get more information, because with those civil suits, you don't get to know all the information until the, the case is made the details mm -hmm. so the details is made you don't know everything and yeah. you don't know yeah. about uh Ariza's, uh manager right. how good he talks how he kind of like held it off until it happened everybody everybody's not looking everybody's playing it. the game yeah, everybody's, everybody's playing, playing the game. game it's a game bro like it, yeah this is not nothing new this is not nothing new it, bills look just like a nfl team that's it no doubt. I mean, I, I, I think that they should have cut him Mike, immediately. Mike, a, a good point to <coughs> – yeah, and go. to go off of you, though, Mike, real, like, if we want to, you know, it's easy to, for Rob and I also to say, you know, stand on the, the values for sure, but if yeah. this is Josh Allen, Stephon Beast, if this is another player, you know, a lot of people check themselves, you know, while you still cut them immediately. Or be letting it play out, like like you said, is this just yeah. an organization doing what their protocol yeah. what they're supposed to do? When more people are saying, like, "Listen, hey, if this is listen, 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 listen." Nobody wants to hear me say this. Yeah, nobody wants to hear me say this. If if Josh Allen had been accused of something at Wyoming that we had just found out about on Friday from the L.A. Times, I promise he would still you, been playing through the case. I promise you, there would have been a different tenor. I'm not come <laughs> big on, Mike, come big on. Mike over here. Throwing on, over bro. chandeliers, he's throwing he kicking over yeah. tables at Nickel City Crew. But I promise they you, they would have, man. I'm telling you, they would have. He would have played through the civil suit. Mm. I'm Think sorry, nobody it. wants to hear that. Nobody no, wants to hear, want that. to hear I'm that. I'm sorry, bro. yeah. But I, this is not Twitter because you know, what, James, yo, like what, what did James Brown say? What did James Brown say, Rob? This is What's a man's that? world. It's a man's world. It's a nasty world. It is nasty. I and talked about it. It is just how it is, and it's terrible. And if it's not criminal, they don't move as fast. It's an organization. Yeah. You know, they're not going to just be like, pop. And then what if the civil suit never came up? Right. That's what I mean. Then, that's what Brandon Mead said. Listen, listen to it, Bill's Mafia. Then to he would have been out team. loose. And then what would y'all have done if he was out there loosey, and no case, done, and, and then somebody didn't. got, somebody picked him up? Mm hmm. Yeah. So no. what's their, what's their, yeah, their argument is they invest in this kid. They believe in this kid. They, he told them. They believed his, him. His version. That's that's mm -hmm. their his defense. Version. That's yeah. their yeah. defense right now, and yeah. and protocol. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah. and, and is, is that good enough? I I I don't know. Well, it wasn't good enough for Bills Mafia. And again, I'm I'll, I'll stand up and I'll say that I'm happy that you know the women of Bills Mafia stood up again. The real men of Bills Mafia stood up. This was not something that should have been played with lightly. I I do yeah, agree nah. with him nah, being off the nah. team. He is. Yeah. And again, it, it sucks that we have to compare the the draft status and position but that does matter we would be fake is. if we didn't so he is a six round punter i don't get i really don't give a shit like just let him go and and it it's not it worth is. the distraction and i, I know no. that that's what brandon bean and sean mcdermott thought along with with the pagulas and, and that's what that happened worth it. yeah when the civil say when the civil case came up it became too much of distraction for the buffalo bills and as an organization they decided to pull the plug and that's exactly what you're supposed to do yeah yeah, I and, 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 yeah, I understand that because it wasn't the, of, it wasn't a distraction before when they knew. 
Thank you. It, yes. It when now knew it was no, Sean expensive. McDermott, I got mad at somebody last night on Twitter. He, Sean McDermott called him a good guy. He went on the show. Didn't he go on a national show recently? I think it was Barstool Sports. And they were talking and joking around, like, who could Sean McDermott beat up among all the other NFL yeah. coaches? And he mentioned yeah, his yeah, variable yeah. stuff. On that same interview, they talked about punt guy. He says he's a nice kid. He's a great you're kid. Because you're, you're only getting yeah. his side and that's of the story. After knowing. So, yeah. you yeah. know, after knowing, you only get his side of the situation. Once the but rest man, of it all, comes out, but, then you got to make a move. That's it. Make a but move. all weekend, McDermott is on this microphone. Like, yeah, that's hard to watch, man. Did, were you watching that? He yeah, I, I wasn't watching, talk. but I listened to it. He was very distraught. I was, he could I was barely listening to it. I was like, this is this know? is the first time and I've so ever heard like, my coach like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, but he knew about it a month ago. You know, right. so so you now you're distraught on the microphone when it comes. Right. It just, there's you're, there's a you're lot creating, of you're creating you're know, creating an image you're correct that's what yeah. that's what i don't that's what i need bills mafia and we are going to move on we're not going to talk about this all <clears> i'm just they, he's creating an image i'm not saying that he wasn't hurt in that moment but he was it seemed to me that he was more pissed off that he had to be up there taking slinging the shots as soon as somebody yeah. asked him about the yeah. carolina game he made sure that he stayed on brand this is i don't even want to well, talk about the game because i don't even want to talk about the game you think about like this right mcdermott stand-up guy right um he believes in his players right he believes in the organization. And if you're a part of the Bills, you're part of the Mafia, it it he follows suit as such with every player. Right. And he goes until you give him a reason not to go. Right. So for him to be on the opposite side of the spectrum. It was it's, probably uncomfortable. It, it, it's out of his wheelhouse. Okay. He don't know how to do that. He, right. He's not used to being uh, what they call it, bamboozled. Right, right, right. Blindsided. Yeah, like, like The Bachelor. Absolutely. He got blindsided yeah. because... The, when the rest of the information hit the streets, that's when he found out, and that's when we found out. Mm. Whether everybody believes yeah. it or not, when it hit the street, that's when he found out, and yeah, that's he, when we found out. The Bills knew at the end of July that, that Matt <clears throat> Ryza had had some allegations that might might come up, and that's the but extent that's of what they knew. That's and they it. knew his version of the story. So that's they it. operated under that under that that guise, and then at, when it came out with the LA Times on last Friday, then, then it's at your doorstep. And you've got to move. So, yeah. only thing I was saying, Big Mike, is that the Bills kind of look bad sometimes because some of Bills Mafia wanted him to be cut that day, and I understand people that felt that way. I, um, I get that. I get that because it, it's a terrible situation to be accused of. But you mm -hmm. have to sometimes let these things take its course. Yeah, and that's what the Bills sadly, chose too, for two days. Yeah, they chose sadly. for two days. The heat was too hot. <clears throat> you can't stand the heat, as we always would say. Uh, in Dang. the South, and you need to get out the kitchen. So yep. the Bills Dang, got no out problem. the kitchen, and they cut him. Listen, no we'll problem. move on. I had to stay on brand and at least address it. And and to yeah. anybody that I offended on Twitter last night, I don't care, to be honest, because Listen. I'm going to stand on my truth. And I know that the Bills are a business, and I never get it twisted because they have yeah. shown us, not just the Bills, the NFL has shown yeah. us many, many times that they do care about That's the bottom the line, number one. Yeah. They're, they're a behemoth. That's the NFL. That's what they care okay. about. And we got to think about it like this. We can all have our set of opinions, mm -hmm. but we do not have keys to the stadium. That's right. So That's right. let's all be understanding and, and, and see it for what it is. We Absolutely. can all have our opinions, but we weren't in these offices. We weren't in these meetings. We weren't in none of that. So we have no idea what extent it was, what they knew in July, none of that. So as long as they, at the end result, is the end result, what they wanted yes yes and that's and, and that's what that. bills yeah and that's what bills you fans know. wanted to as well they wanted the end result so yeah, as we shift got. yeah as we shift i appreciate it i mean I, we yeah. had to address it so i mean it's all good and, yeah. and, and sometimes i know looking at the underbelly is a little uncomfortable um yeah. you know as as an nfl fan as bills mafia like we we it's sometimes it's not cool to look at but as an NFL fan, when they ran Colin Kaepernick out, I was uncomfortable. Now, I did not leave. I did not stop watching. I had a cousin that stopped watching, but that was his choice. I I already knew what I signed up for. I I, I signed up for the cockfighting. I know that this is a, it's a drug <clears throat> a pledge. Yep. Guys get hurt. Mm -hmm. Guys get cut. They don't care about the guys. that You know what I mean? As soon as you can't produce, you're gone. Like, I understand what I'm signing up for as a fan. Yeah. So I wasn't blindsided by Colin. I knew that they were going to treat him um shitty when went after the you know after the whole For kneeling sure. came out i knew how they were going to do as soon as they started changing For the conversation sure. to the flag i knew like okay they're not gonna listen to this guy and they're gonna get sick of him and they're gonna kick yeah. him out the league eventually and that's yeah. exactly what happened and they never let him back in so and but that doesn't make me not a bills fan that doesn't make me not an nfl no. fan because i already no. again i know what i'm signing up for when you know go to the casino you know 
there's a chance you can lose money. It's up to you how much money you want to wager. But you know, when you go to the casino, there's a risk. I know hey, with the yeah. NFL, there's a risk. I'm gonna see some shady shit, Mike. <laughs> I was a, I was a, I was a dealer at the casino for five years. I used to yeah. tell everybody, you don't have to be here. Mm. You don't, ha- you don't have to be here. Nobody Nobody's asked forcing you to come you. here. You're not on the schedule. Nobody's forcing you to be here. But Mm-mm. you're here. You're, you're making a choice by you're choice. A choice. Yeah. So complain wisely you see what i'm saying because at the end of the day didn't nobody tell you to come here that's that's the truth you ain't lying about it you You ain't lying about it as we as we shift i i really wanted to talk about i'm so happy that the preseason is over and we're we're getting ready to get to uh the regular season i wanted to to speak about what we're getting ready to do i mean week one is around the corner if you look on your calendar literally it's next week like what are we doing next week i think we're 10 days away I'm excited about all of it. DT, please speak to it. Like, we are literally <coughs> right around the corner from the regular season. We are, what, 10 days away? Like, we are going to kick off the 2022 yeah. NFL season. DT, I know you've got to be excited about it, man. I know you have to be excited about it. I'm I'm on. Juice. I'm, I'm so amped for this season. I cannot wait. Juice, yeah, wait. juice. Man, sorry for the technical difficulties there, uh, but we're back. Um, you, we hear me all right? We good to go? Oh yeah, you good, man? How excited right, are you? Yeah, we right. rolling. We rolling. Oh man, I'm 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 juiced up. I mean, this is like I like I said last week. Josh Allen's addicting. Josh Allen's mm-hmm. addicting, and mm-hmm. I can't wait to to watch this team get rolling, watch this leadership, watch them grow one more year, and just hitting, man. There's nothing like the fall. There's nothing like NFL. Ooh, juiced up. Super excited. That's the fact. Yeah, man, Mike, what you got me for me? What yeah, I, I mean, are you ready? I mean, um, ten days, I'm, man. My calendar yeah, says ten days. I'm beyond ready. Um, I I'm just so amped for this thing to just kick off because it's long overdue. Um, you know, everybody just is excited to see these guys hit, see these guys just excel in this thing we call football. And um, I'm game, man. You already know I'm in. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm all the way in. I'm, I'm, I'm all pot committed. I'm ten toes down. I'm, I'm yes. into it. So, I mean, I can't wait. Yes. We've got cuts on today, on Tuesday by four o'clock today. Uh, the NFL rosters across the league need to be cut down to fifty-three. So we, we're set for today. Listen, DT, Mike, the 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 rosters pretty much set. I don't see too many surprises coming out by four o'clock. I know that things will trickle out uh, as the the morning and afternoon get rolling along. Uh, but we release early in the morning on Tuesday. So I don't – that the roster is pretty much set. Do you see any big – like what's your biggest surprise? I don't see many big surprises coming. Do you have anything think, that in the back of your mind, DT? I think the biggest thing, uh, you know, they're, they're small, but uh, the only thing you can really think of is, um, you know, that deep running back spot. You know, is Duke Johnson getting on? Are they keeping this black shear? Who had a great, you know, preseason mm-hmm. for us? That's that's mm-hmm. that's really mm-hmm. kind of that's uh, interesting. a question. I like that. OJ, are getting a lot of love. OJ Howard or uh, or <coughs> Morris. Morris, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's been a that's been a battle, and a lot mm-hmm. have had you know both have had a lot of playing time. Uh, you know, counter obviously coming in, counter Dawson Knox, and you know, defensively, I think pretty solid. There might be you know one defender, if Cam Lewis. Um, questionable but i think everything else is pretty pretty spot in and, and ready to roll and uh like i said maybe probably the biggest one either being that running back or, or back, deep yeah. in the tight ends yeah i agree what about you I dt agree. yeah same thing yeah yeah I, I i agree definitely because uh the running back uh situation man that's gonna be that i think that's gonna be the, the crazy part yeah duke johnson um, played well he scored some touchdowns in the second game and and then yeah, but last year has kind of been the Blackshear, guy like all preseason he's been doing he's the, the underdog he's yeah. the underdog for we us love that. We, we love underdogs we so love that's that. why everybody's on black team man yeah um, we love it i ooh, i don't know see what, anything man i don't see the any one surprises. thing the one thing that will hurt my stomach hear me out is if <laughs> If we let go of OJ Howard, I, I will I will literally <laughs> fold up. Yeah. And I, and I and I'm gonna leave it at that. Like I will literally fold up as a child and oh be upset goodness. for about at least five gonna, minutes. They're gonna put you in the fetal position if, if, yes. if the presser comes out that oh OJ Howard's been cut. Yeah. Listen, I'll yeah. say this. Oh I like I like Morris, but I love Howard's <sighs> At like coming out of L, I remember watching him in the national championship. Like this dude, dude like is a, a monster, man. man. First round pick, so much potential. The dude, he's he a beast for sure. But 
But uh, you know, you can't you can't get caught in the game like I sometimes play Madden in franchise mode. You you, you <laughs> like the names, you know, you like the names, and then you, you you look the next year and they're seventy eight real quick, you know. So yeah, yeah. So you look uh, for you gotta keep an eye on that. And, and he had uh, his injury was uh, one that a lot of people don't come back from, or at least aren't the same from. So sure. um, sure. I obviously like him too. I like his, you know, I like the name, his athletic ability for sure. But Quentin Morris yeah. is balling this preseason. He's making yeah, it tough. Moving. I mean, maybe yeah, they'll carry they three. Like, it's like, tough to see three, but if they, yes. uh, you know, if they do, I'd like to see them both. But it's it's a tough uh, one for sure. You can't take it away from him. Like, stop him and on over there. Uh, you you a guest now. This is Tampa big... Bay. Tampa Bay misused this man. I agree for years. I agree. And yeah. But he was also I would hate playing for him to, debatably you know, one of the best quarterbacks ever. Well, yeah, just, but just the, recently but he just got the, the, he just got him before that. The he guy who he was playing with had his best friend with him, so OJ Howard never had a chance. You know, yeah. yeah. So I would yeah, I would like just, to see the man have a chance, have a glow up season. That's my whole thing. It's like yeah, okay, I, yeah. I love his I love his trend. Trend. Yeah. Yeah. My man, my man's playing. My man's playing almost every snap in the preseason. He's out there all the, the whole the whole damn time. He said it. He said, I need it. I need every snap. Oh my goodness. He yeah, ain't played. That's what I'm saying. He hasn't played. So it's like, hell yeah, I need every snap, bro. I get an opportunity to start somewhere. Yeah, but he, because he, in Tampa, he, he wasn't yeah, normally any what the, Yeah, normally you're not gonna be out there all the time if you're getting ready to be slotted as the number two tight end. So I I mean we'll see. We'll see. That'll we'll be see. that'll be interesting to watch as the afternoon gets ready to roll around. Uh, we'll see yeah. if there's any surprise cuts again. Cuts are due by 4 p.m. today. Uh, the roster, we already know, is pretty much set. I, I, let's try to answer a few questions, if we can, as we get uh, turn the corner, get ready to wrap up soon. I, I, I've i got a few questions for you guys because they, they might seem obvious, but to me, this first question is not. I, I really would love to know who is the cornerback two behind Dane Jackson. The uh, It is assumed that Trey White will not be ready. I don't think that they have officially put him on the pup list. Uh, pup mm-hmm. list excuse me. So if, if um. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But that would mean that he would have to be out for the first four weeks. So I think that the Bills are not willing. He's close enough that they don't want to lose him for the first four games. But I don't think he's going to be ready for L.A. with the way that the wind is blowing right now. Who's who's cornerback two behind Dane Jackson? Uh, 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 Big Mike, our guest. Who who is it? Is it Elam? Did he lose it to Benford? Are they who is the cornerback two opposite Dane Jackson when when the Bills line up against Cooper Cup? and Van Jefferson, and all the different weapons that they have out there in, in L.A. and SoFi Stadium? I feel like the the room has a nice talent hue to it to okay. where there doesn't have to be a solid number two. You got to keep your guys Rotate. fresh. Okay. Rotate them. So they don't have to put a significant amount spotlight of stress. Amount of stress. On, <laughs> an amount of stress on mm-hmm. a number two because they have good fellas. Right. So play it out. You yeah. know, you got some good guys. Like, let them rock, man. And they've been killing it. So let them rock. Let them D- rock. Let them rotate them. DT, last week you had a similar <clears throat> approach when we spoke about the cornerback two discussion. I think you you were yeah. kind of in the same in the same vein for episode two. It was a couple of episodes ago. You you think that they'll, they'll do a rotation as well, don't you? A little, yeah, a little committee concept. I think I think so. I think the the two, you know, especially Ben Preston Young done a good job going head to head. They both made plays and they also got beat, you know. So it's gonna be a battle uh, you know, next Thursday, Thursday night, it's gonna be real for sure. And mm-hmm. they're gonna have to stay fresh and, and keep moving, but it's chain reaction. I mean, if uh mm-hmm. Jordan Poyer is a little off his step with this injury and can't come down and help like like he normally could, you know, that's gonna open them up to a lot. So I think that's what McDermott and Frazier really gotta sink into is you know if they get under pressure and these guys get out on an island by themselves who's going to be able to man up more than the other and um i think right now that's elam just because of the base his size um straight up and um benford definitely is going to get some plays in there and and make it happen but but uh i think they're not going to elam strictly for the fact if you get uh, who's going to be tougher out there and and so far i've seen in that regard in my opinion at least yeah. Okay, I'm with you. You're you're breaking up a little bit, but I know you're going to try to get that situated. I mean, I I I think that is probably, I think it's probably Elam to to, to actually start just because of the fact of just draft status plus everything that's you know that goes into that. They want to see their investment kind of could get an opportunity, but yeah, I expect to see Benford week one. I do expect to see him in a rotation. So we know Taron Johnson will man the slot corner position, uh, and then we'll kind of just go from there. So 
I do expect to see both men in rotation playing mm -hmm. week one. And I don't think that the, the Bills even want to kind of put that pressure on Elam or put all that pressure on Benford or anything like that. Not one guy can carry that load for, for four. <clears throat> I don't, I don't, Hell I think it would be wise not to do that as well. So we're all in agreement there. Let's see if we can get a little bit of, of disagreements on the next question. I'm wondering what this Bills offense is going to look like week one. I'm not talking about the full season. I'm not talking about projecting out. What is the Bills offense going to look like week one? One of my number one questions coming into the season, fellas, was that I was worried. And, and I, I, I can't stand when I use the word worry. I was concerned with Ken Dorsey taking the job for the first time and had never being and never done it before. Doesn't mean he can't do it. Doesn't mean he's not capable. I said it at nauseum, but it is something new. What is this offense going to look like? What do you expect to see, DT? from this offense as we open the season because I'm I'm real excited to see it. Some people predict that it's going to be high octane, the same as, as Dables, but you know that there's going to be different wrinkles on it. Every man wants to put his own fingerprints on it when he gets the job. Ken Dorsey's the man now, not Brian Dable. Is it going to look a lot different, DT, in your opinion, next Thursday? I don't, I don't think so. I think there's going to be some interesting aspects to it. You know, you're going to see – um, Isaiah McKenzie into a role that, uh, you know, he's earned and, and been good. And I think he's going to be able to, you know, go out there and, and show what he's got for sure. But uh, your boy Khalil Shakir, I think, is easily on this team, mm -hmm. no matter That's what. So, um, you know, this is That's a situation where, yeah, we can really, um, you know, see some new players, James Cook out there. But other than that, I think it's going to be the same deal. Josh Allen getting open and, and, uh, and making it happen. Yeah. Deep. Big Mike, what's up? What you think? What what are we gonna All look right. like? What are we actually gonna look like when we line up? I feel like when we line up, it's going to look like <laughs> like is it Brian Dable like carbon copy? Is it gonna be some like some some Ken Dorsey wrinkles in there? Like like what do you expect to see next Thursday? I cannot well, wait for this damn game. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna tell you guys one thing that is going to benefit with Dorsey being in there. Okay. Um, please do because I've been worried all the, summer. Do you remember the um, the infamous dead plays, those yes. empty yes. plays yes. that yes. our guy used to those have in there? Lament that's, those, yes. That's no more. No more dead plays. I think Ken Dorsey is fresh. He's um, he's young. He's innovative. He had three years with Josh. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, he's right there. And he was on ground floor. So it's like, for you to have that much like studying time mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. come out into to a team like this, that you just have to do a little kink here, a little kink there and stuff like that. But other than that, I mean, you got, you got a bang up team. Like this is, this is your rise to fame right now. So mm -hmm. I feel like as long as you take care of them dead plays, we good. Well, and I, think I mean, he's going to do that. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see. Like, I, again, I'm intrigued. I, I try not to use the word worry. I'm intrigued by it. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Um, I, I guess my default setting says that it's going to look, a, you know, very similar to Dable's offense. But again, I don't discount the fact that he will want to put his own um, fingerprints on the offense. My only thing is, again, and this is the, the thing that's been sticking to the back of my crawl for, and it's really a McDermott point. Um, with Dable because Bills fans again stuff that we don't like to talk about last year Dable and and McDermott didn't always see eye to eye and I know that McDermott wanted to run the ball more and because more effectively and he talked about it <laughs> I mean he talked about it a lot though he talked about it a lot big Mike like he talked because, about running bro, the ball more effectively so I'm and, wondering, but I'm wondering the place, is Ken no Dorsey going to be place. trying to please his boss? Like, is Ken Dorsey going to come into this job trying no, to please his boss he's just and going want to, be, to run more? No. Well, he's just going well, to do I'm, exactly what he's supposed to do and and stop them damn dead plays on third down <laughs> DT, please, and them running plays where we ate. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that stuff That stuff doesn't make any sense. So, you know, DT, come DT, on. talk now. to us, man. We well, got a guess in here. He's kicking over racks and stuff, kicking over stuff. I mean, you're going to have to also – Get this, get this offense in motion a little bit. Josh Allen played one series all preseason. I mean, right. granted, obviously they're you know they're they're working through you know through training camp and whatnot. But three, 
three passes, one series. Um, so there's going to be some rust for sure from this offense with Tommy. And, and, and that's every NFL team across the slate, obviously. But mm-hmm. uh, I think the running game is going to be, you know, very important to be able to give Josh those plays off to kind of get his bearings straight and, and, and get comfort and get in. And, um, you know, a team uh, that also has a powerful uh, offense on the other end, you want to keep them off the field as much as possible with your offense. So taking longer drives and, uh, you might see some running just in the fact of, I don't think to plead McDermott, but uh, just to get Josh uh, some rest and, and, and get his bearings right early. I, yeah. I understand. I agree with both of that. I, one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, for sure, because I think it's important in the same vein of the offense, is the receiving room, which I am very excited about. One of the reasons I'm excited about, well, two of the reasons I'm really excited about is that I am a Zeke fan. I mean, I stand on his table. I love Zeke. I think he's funny. Um, and on the field, I think that he's been underrated in respects to how he's been used. He's been more of a gadget guy, and I think that he has the capability to do more. Um, and then, we, I mean, you know, Shakir is my guy. Like, I mean, Big Mike already said it. Like, that is my guy. Like, I am a Shakir fan. I want him to succeed. Number he's 10 good. is my favorite number. And he has done nothing to he's done nothing to disappoint wearing that great number. I'm going to get his jersey. I normally would put Crippen on the back of the jerseys and, and rock a custom jersey. I will support him and his family, buy a jersey, an official one. Um, because I just I'm all about this young man. So he's talk good. to me about Zeke, y'all. Talk to me about Shakir. Please speak on it. DT, talk to me about Zeke and Shakir. Because I think that week one, I'm talking week one, I think that they could. They can start off and just and, and pr- show a little bit of something different with this Bills offense yeah. that we might not have. I, I'm I'm pumped up for number ten, man. I'm right mm-hmm. there with you. You got me. Mm-hmm. You got me hyped on him, and uh, you know I, I'm with that. He has the potential to, you know, be a breakout player on this offense, and and all these catches and, and yards you've seen him gain in the preseason weren't uh, with the best quarterback in the world throwing to him. So. Uh, you know, I think mm-hmm. that's going to that's gonna open him up even more than we saw in the preseason and his speed. And, and he looks like a gamer through and through. Looks like he fits right in. Um, and Isaiah McKenzie as well. Uh, you know, he's going to be, but that's that's more expected. You know, uh, Cole Beasley, the past couple of years, it was never the standout star of this team, but we expected him to be consistent. Um, you know, he's an all-pro. In he's a so, all-pro. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. So we we expect the same for Isaiah McKenzie. I obviously am pumped up to, to see him work a little, but uh, we expect him to to fill that role and you know and and be that uh, that guy you can count on in the slot as well as you know he'll have some help hopefully uh, with Jameson Crowder. Big Mike Uzik fan. I mean, that, can I pull oh, your card out, Uzik? Oh, you are okay. You some people, some people hate on Zeke for some reason. I don't know. Oh, he, I don't know why. He, well, I, he fumbled. Everybody wants to say he. Fumbled. I mean, I was at that game. He slipped in the rain. You know, I mean, the it, only it the, silly, but hey, I mean, it happens. from a from a barber standpoint. The only reason why I could see that because I hate his haircut. But other than that, <laughs> that's, that's personal for me. It's personal. Zeke, if you're watching me, I'll hook you up straight crazy. It's not so listen. Besides that, that besides that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Besides that. But other than that, I mean, these guys are whew, electric. Yeah, he is. I think he, I think he, I think he can have a bigger role in the offense if they would just give him one. And I think he that, will. I think, yeah, and I think at the end of the year, they they kind of saw that they needed him mm-hmm. in spot duty against New England. He showed up, he was ready to play. Um, I know that he pouted a little bit and stuff like that when he got benched. What? Listen, we're human. We're not ro- the, we're, these players are not robots. So who is going to be happy that they've been demoted? No one. Who comes no in to work and they give you they give you a demotion sheet or they give you a memo yeah. that says that you're making less, you're going to get less and of a role in the company. I mean, you know, and, and he, he wasn't, wasn't belligerent or anything like that. I mean, he was upset. And he wasn't yeah. bitching in his first year either. He's no. he's worked a few years. Oh, he's in a worker. To get a shot, so, it's one of the reasons um, I yeah. love him. Mm-hmm. He's a yeah. worker, man. He he well, grinds. I love that with me and. Adam had talked about me and Dita talked about you. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Silent Silent move, loud results. Loud results. Yeah. That's what he is. You know what I'm saying? That's what he is. Like he's been moving like a ninja these last couple years. And now he's actually about to reap the benefits of his movements. I think so. You know, he keeps his head down and he just balls. Every time he has a chance, opportunity, he shines. And that's what Mm -hmm. you're supposed to do in this league. And you know what I mean? You show and prove. That's what it is. All right. Well, we've got we've got the information again for week one on the Bills offense. Let's switch sides of the ball before we wrap up. I would love to hear one final. We're going to put a uh, we're going to put a nail in this coffin for the final time. And I know it was hotly debated last year for the defensive side of the ball. Oh, I know I it. stand out. I'm going to go there, Mike. I'm, I know where I you stand on it. I would like for everyone to bring <laughs> the smoke. You are a guest, but you can you can bring the smoke if you want to. DT was our was our. Was our defense last year a little inflated? 
by bad quarterback competition. Answer, just answer honestly, because this is the crew. We always will keep it. We'll keep it 100 <laughs> here. And we'll, we'll, listen, was the D a little bit inflated? Number one ranked D, Bills Mafia, Nickel City crew. Number one DVOA. I think they were number one points allowed. Um, they, on paper, were the best defense in the NFL. We played some garbage quarterbacks. DT, I'm giving DT the floor first. DT, please tell me, were, were they inflated or were they not? Because that gives me more perspective as we face um, a much tougher schedule, especially with the first seven games, as we talked about last week. I think I think they were inflated a, a touch, but I think there's a split split reasoning, you know, for that. I think uh, obviously, okay. like you mentioned, the uh, not playing the other quarterbacks, you know, the starters in most cases is a lot easier to defend against. But you also got to give credit to the powerful <laughs> offense. You know, okay. they're going out and scoring on almost every possession. You okay. get that offense in a situation where, you know, they're 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 hucking around. You know, they're getting okay. out of their game plan to try to keep up with you. And mm-hmm. that also makes you, you know, it takes them out of their character. A little more, mm-hmm. Yeah, a little more on the defensive end, you're able to eat a little more. So mm-hmm. um I think uh yeah, definitely a little inflated. You you don't get to pick who you play, you know, we all know that right. and that's straight mm-hmm. up and and the teams they should have beat up per, other than a few occasions, they beat up pretty bad, obviously blowouts. So um, I think this defense is, you know, capable. This defense is strong. And any weakness in this defense, I think they have dressed this year. And this defensive yes. line is, you know, a bunch of dogs. And I think they're going to get out and, and really wreak some havoc that we haven't seen a Bills defensive line doing in quite some time. So I'm excited for that. I think uh, any inflation is going to be overshadowed by uh, the beef of this defensive line coming in and taking care of business. Mm, big Mike, yeah. he he shut me up quick with that, and I already know where you stand. But tell my audience, since you're a guest here, because I was on your podcast, uh, not your average podcast in the seven one six. Talk to me. I mean, were they inflated? They we play garbage quarterbacks. I we, feel like and we look great. I feel like that to? was that was that was knowledge, right? That was like okay. common knowledge. We knew that. We knew that. So, and I think the coaching staff knew that as well. So, what they did was they addressed those things. Okay. Instead of Within resting the off on their season and letting mm-hmm. resting on it and not, you know, we don't need to address it. We saw it. We're gonna get he it, revamped crack it. it, revamp it real quick, get the you know, a beefier line up front because because why why do we talk about that, Rob? That they had the view <laughs> of the line? Huh? <laughs> yeah, fake ass predator. I can't stand him, bro. Nah, because I'm gonna tell you one dude that's gonna lose his job this year, he keep playing around. Edmonds. Come and on, he, man. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about fake it, bro. Ass predator, you talking about <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Me and he, DT he, talked about he, it a couple episodes ago. He wow, he, I said, when is he, he gonna play like his nickname? Bro. He called he yeah. called himself Savage. I said, What nah, what? Savage, bro? You is not <laughs> savage, bro. Like at all. Wow. Like he, he play wow. like a he, cupcake. <laughs> right oh now, God, right kidding. now, until right now, until two seven gets back, that's the weakest point in the defense. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, that, that is so a, that they is need, true. you know, they're going to need help from the back and from the front. And like I said, the safety's got to stay healthy, and those vets yep. are going to do a lot for him back there. But this defensive line needs to get to the quarterbacks too, to to not let have these guys guard four or five seconds down the field. Right. You know, right. they're going to need they're going to need help from the front and the back and. Yeah. Uh, you know, 49's right in there with that, and I think him and Milano will have a little more space to uh, it'll be cleared up a little more for him than it usually is because the line's gonna have such good penetration. I swear to God, DC, <laughs> if I see this dude with those like panic dreads floating in the air because he done missed the play and now he's chasing somebody, I'm done, bro. I'm oh done, yeah, I'm done yeah. with oh it. And, and, but not to get you know, but not to get too. Uh, <laughs> you know, technical and XOs here, but watching Don't the do preseason it. game Friday, Friday night, I mean, the all those young guys in there, that first couple of series, they were flying around. Mm-hmm. You know, Shaq Lawson, they were flying, but then mm-hmm. they'd have two good plays in a row and then they'd get beat, you know? Right. And, and obviously it led to touchdowns in Carolina, but for the most part, they were, they were ripping and roaring and really flying around. And mm-hmm. I think put the starters in and add a little more discipline. That's the vibe you're going to see from this Bills team. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't mind. Um, it, you obviously can't get beat like you did Friday night on multiple right. occasions, but I don't mind yeah. flying around a little bit and being, you know, maybe overrunning a play. But as we, we talked about, you know, earlier in the season here at Nickel City Crew, Savage has got to live up to that nickname. Got to live up to that nickname, man. Lewis, he got to live up to that nickname. Big He's Mike is rolling the eyes for the people. audience. Uh, I, feel you, I feel you, but... But if they're flying around like like I think they're gonna be, I think he's gonna be laying the hurt on multiple occasions this year. I, listen, 
I need him to because there now now there's somebody to take his job, people. Mm-hmm. And Bernard, there's somebody mm-hmm. who take his job mm-hmm. in Bernard, mm-hmm. and this man is all over the place. Smart mm-hmm. player. He's there before the play starts instead mm-hmm. of afterwards chasing and all that. And it's like he's a small boy though. He's but listen, boy. it don't matter. But listen, DT, long as you there, bro. Long as you there, you can be as small as you want. <laughs> I, I nobody talking about Trey. That. Trey be in there. Trey be Trey be there. Trey was there more than Edmonds when he was when he was Oh God. <laughs> Trey White was there at oh, more God. plays than Edmonds was throughout the whole time that he was healthy. Like, let's keep it a buck. He was there oh. first. Oh my God. I'm gonna lose so, every single Trey Edmonds fan from Nickel City crew. They all get ready to leave me tonight. I mean Listen. listen, listen. I'm only temporary, so you ain't gotta leave him. You ain't gotta leave him. I'm only here for a second, y'all. Y'all good, but listen. Tell me I'm wrong, and that's Look, all I say. Tell me I'm I wrong. I mean, I mean, it, it it's hard to. Oh, debate. what did I say? I'm sorry, Rob. I'm sorry. What did I say? He who he was? I said he is the Tyrod Taylor of linebackers. Oh okay. My oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Go oh my god. He did tell me at the, at the Panthers game, literally section five thirty five. We had a great time <laughs> leading into Fantastic that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave Trey alone because I don't want too many forty nine fans coming at me. Listen, I'm fine with him. I like him. He is young. He is rangy. He is big. He does have cool dreads. I yeah. do want him to make splash plays if he wants to be paid like a top five linebacker. Period. I'll leave it there. If he doesn't yeah. want to be paid like a top five linebacker, I welcome him back. And I know that Brandon Bean is a magician that can bring him back on a less proven deal. If you want to be paid like top five this yes. year in 2022, yeah. I, I will need to see some splash from, from the young He's going to have to bite somebody this year. <laughs> Mike is crazy on this 49 stuff. Listen, man, we're gonna finish I love up. Him, man. I, love him, I, I do sure. too, man. I really do. He's a good, For he's sure. a good young man. And I and I, I like his family. He's got football in his family. His father played as well. His brother played. I need so. I need him to stub his toe or get in an argument with his girl or like oh, lose my. some money at the casino or something. Be angry, bro. Like get it, get hype. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Listen, big Mike came through. We really appreciate you coming through tonight. We're gonna wrap this up with Plans for week one. We know the Bills are on the road. I know a lot of the Bills Mafia, Nickel City crew, are obviously not going to be making the trip out to L.A. Some obviously will, and we always uh, love to see the Bills fans in the stands. So enjoy uh, your time out there if you are going out to SoCal. If you're not and you're in the Western New York region or you're across the country like me and Mike are down here in Charlotte, what what's the plan? What's your plans, DT, for week one? Where you where are you watching this epic season opener i mean this is really this is cool man like, like that was one of the things that when it came out i was like wow what a man. sign of respect that the bills have finally arrived and the Huge drought sign of is respect. really behind us like it really is a like an old nightmare that it, it's over it did happen but it is like it's officially over and this to me yeah. when they announced the schedule release is always my number one day of the nfl calendar outside of the season opener because of the fact that i plan my entire fall and winter based on when the games are who we are going to when we're going to because i'm a season ticket holder when it came out i was really (laughs) really excited dt because of the fact that we were shown respect and like we we have arrived we here like as they say like we in here like we here where are you watching the game? What you gonna do? What you gonna do, DT? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be live. I think um, I'm I'm hosting at the crib. I'm hosting at the crib. We got uh, uh, I got an early flight uh, next morning, taking a little vacation out of town that Friday morning. So okay. uh, hosting at the crib, gonna have the real uh, you know the real ones over. Uh, yeah, 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 the yeah, real ones. Yeah. Yeah. We right. got uh, commission. <laughs> I got the setup. Yep, the setup's nice. I got a uh, living room junior, living room senior. Okay. Uh, so there'll be two TVs in there, and then we got right. uh, we'll have a TV going in the in the kitchen in the dining room too. So you'll be uh, full. Oh, so y'all covered by like, you covered on uh, every yeah, ask, yeah, every yeah, angle. I'm sure yes. we'll just be you know we'll be chilling. We'll be you know got the shrimp cocktail rolling and yeah, uh, yeah. kind of yeah. low key, but it ain't gonna be low key. It, we, <laughs> no. We're gonna be hype. <laughs> we're know, gonna be hype. <laughs> you know we turned up. With, uh, Big Mike plans for you. I actually wanted to to let you know that you are officially invited to Nickel City's Cruise first season opener party we are going to throw a party at at, at the Crippen household and you and your lady okay. are, are definitely invited you and your wife and, and i met i met um his wife over the weekend at the game and like listen what you what you up to man because i'm either gonna be i'll be yeah, at the yeah. crib for sure and I'm, we're gonna be throwing a big party and waking up all the neighbors that's what we do okay because <laughs> i'm i'm because you know what i actually don't i haven't had you know you're new to the city you're new to show yeah so i'm like i don't even know i mean what shoe i got tavern on the there. tracks is the bills bar i used to go to it like religion when i first moved down to charlotte that is the number one bills backer bar in north carolina right here in charlotte on south boulevard so you could check that out uh, we've got okay. a bar up here al's bar and grill 
uh, which is up in the Huntersville Cornelius area. That's a huge Bills backer bar as well. But wow. tap it on the tracks. I mean, it, it's live. It's in there. We definitely yeah, got to go down there. Yeah, we got to go down there one week. Okay. One in the way okay. Because it is okay. live. And every okay. shouts, every time we score, they they blaring the shout song, and they've got indoor uh, and outdoor seating in it. That's where we go. Now that's where we go for sure. I'm but with that. I'm, I'm gonna be. That. Um, I'll probably be at the crib and, and keep okay. it okay. Yeah. Uh, like 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 DT said, I'm gonna keep it low key and throw a party, man, and just let's let's usher in the new year the right way for sure. That's so, all. You, that's all we can do. That's all. Yeah, we can do. yeah. Well, week one prediction. We'll wrap up the show tonight. Week one, DT. I already know it from last week, but we'll remind the fans. Our guest, you will end the show tonight, Mike. What do you got? Win or loss? Week one. Uh, Bills. Thirty four seventeen. Bills. Oh. Wow. Okay, DT, you want to repeat for last night? You don't have to do a, a score if you don't want to. I know. Well, you know, you, you I you know I'm taking a win. Week. You know I'm taking yeah, a win. I know that. I'll, follow, I'll follow Mike up in the 30s. I mean, you're coming out Thursday night. You, you're scoring over 30. 17 knows you probably got to hit 30 to win. 32, 24. <laughs> Bills, my man, DT, my man. Y'all are, y'all are my horrible. Man. I should have gone first since I'm the one that called it a loss. I mean, I, you know, it's week one. I think there'll be kinks to work out. I already predicted 13 and four. This is one of the losses. Y'all not going, y'all not going to make me back off my own show. This is my show. Back up. The, the, the Bills are not going 17 and 0. They're not Rob. going 16 and 1. <laughs> and Rob. yeah, I mean, week one is a perfect week to lose because of the fact that everything is new, man. I'm, I I need you sound, to see you sound I need exactly. to see Dorsey. I need to see him do this. Just uh, because you've never done the job before does not mean you cannot do it, but it does mean you've never done it. I have said it a thousand times in season one. I want to see him do his, this new job. That's it. That's oh, it. Rob. <laughs> I want to see him do it. I don't. Rob. I'm wrong for that. DT, I'm wrong. Big Mike, y'all, y'all gonna just clown me? You ain't yeah. wrong. You, you ain't wrong. It's it's very possible. Very I, just want to I, I know y'all. I know y'all doing the co-host thing and all that. Y'all homies <laughs> and all that. Man, you wrong, bro. You wrong. I hope bro. you're wrong. I, I can't. Say that. I hope you're wrong. You I coming can't out wait. the gate. We coming out the gate smoking. I mean, Aaron Donald crazy. swinging helmets. He, he getting ready to take out Bengals with their own helmets. Like they gonna be pissed off too. Like I matter mean, of fact, they put up fact, the banner. We, yeah, we might have we might have to come through your house because you need some good energy over there. <laughs> need some counseling. <laughs> yeah, because you wild. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. So we got we got two wins from DT. Big Mike, they say wins for the Bills. I say a loss. I'm just trying to stay on brand. I mean, no, nah, Rob, we, Rob, we could Rob lose like everybody. Game. Every, Rob will have everybody holding hands in the house at third, oh third down. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I really appreciate y'all being on. Again, sometimes tough Thanks for happens me, in, in sports that is uh, bigger than sports. And again, I, I encourage uh, the listeners to go back to season one. Please listen to episode five. It is my finest work, in my opinion, when I addressed the Brian Flores um, situation. I thought that it was important to speak on. Everybody that listened to it received it well. Um, same thing for obviously the, the the Jefferson Avenue tragedy. That's episode ten last uh, last season, season one, and, and obviously it was just stuff that had to be addressed. We addressed the matter rising stuff. He's gone. Uh, good riddance. We're good. The Bills got to the place that they needed to be. But just remember, don't forget that the Bills are a business, and we know we love them. And we know we have the charge in Buffalo all over our house, and we buy hoodies and we buy clothes and all that other stuff and and different you know memorabilia. You they are keys to the stadium. They are a business, man. I'm trying to tell you. They're a business. Mm-hmm. They conducted themselves as such. I'm happy that they did get to the right place. I will not be yeah. uh, patting them on the back or anything like that along the way. No, because um, but it's scripted. It is what it is, Big Mike. I, I really appreciate, again, Big Mike over at Built in Buffalo. Not your avid podcast in the 716. Shop 143. You have you heard, heard the name. You heard the name. You heard the name. Come appreciate on, you man. coming on, man. I, I really hey, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Can't, yeah, I appreciate you, Rob, for having me. I really do. I really yeah, do. Yeah, man, I can't wait to show you, on. Charlotte. I can't wait yes. to, to chill with I can't you wait. And, and kick it more yeah. and stuff like that for sure. Because I, I like your yeah. energy, and that's why I appreciate y'all inviting me on your show earlier this, sure. this off season. DT, sure. even, even though you had a couple hiccups without you know letting me know I needed an umbrella and some chairs and towels, oh, but yeah, we'll we get to that. We'll get yeah, that. we had a good time, man. It rained. Yeah. And I told you the rain was going away, and the rain left just in time for game time. We had a beautiful night. Kids had a beautiful yeah. night out there, so I was happy yeah. that they got a chance to experience it. DT, yeah. new co-host, Nickel City Crew, man, as always, man. Sign off, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on again tonight, spending time out of your, your evening, man, to come on yeah. and get this right, man. So thank you, another, man. another strong week. You know, we uh, look forward to the roster. And, and thanks again to, you know, to everyone listening. We appreciate it. And 
real pumped up for the season as you can tell in our voices you know each episode is is getting a little getting more, more live, a little more live so getting more here we go. can't uh, wait can't we're, wait we're, 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 we're yeah. gonna be getting down to single digits and days soon and uh, yeah. it's it's in the veins now we're getting tingly now let's go yeah yeah we're so. getting to it right now we're gonna close it like that as always these were my bills thoughts said out loud we're gonna hit you with a go bills on the way out go bills go bills go bills baby <laughs>